Hi guys, so uh, good morning. Um, so I think maybe it's Sunday morning or due to XYZ reason, we don't have any live students at this point of time, but that's okay. Let's kind of uh, try to take this particular session and let's try to record it up. And hopefully you will find this of value when you, if at all, you'll see it like in the future. Okay. And yeah, so I think uh, the two feedbacks which we have taken from the number of live audience at this point is that yeah, we should plan these particular sessions on the evening. And yeah, if at all you need some particular like suggestions, like what are the days or what are the timings which are more preferable for you, if at all you're watching this on the recorded platform, do write to us. We'll take that into consideration. Okay. Now, without wasting any further time, let's kind of start with this particular session. So what I plan to do was, today I plan to take a session on the evaluation of the patients with a testicular bar. So that's what I plan to do, right? Evaluation of a patient with a testicular bar. Now here, I will very, very briefly cover what you call as the management, but it is a very, very vast topic. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that even if you ask, uh, like you guys are in the residency, and if I ask you regarding the EAU guidelines and all those things, it might not be like, uh, you might not be aware of those particular stuff. So the management of testicular cancer, or rather overall, the management of the malignancies is changing so drastically. If you talk about the urological malignancies, the prostate malignancy, the testes malignancy, especially these two, and even the bladder malignancy, the management of these are changing very, very drastically at a very, very rapid pace. So I will plan another big session on the management of the patients with the testicular mass. But this particular session is predominantly for what you call as the evaluation of a patients with the testicular mass. Okay. Okay. So good to see you, Ashwini. Hi. Good morning. Uh, I hope I assume that you are a student, so just give me a kind of yes in the comment box if at all you are, because I will need your help, because I will be asking a couple of questions, and I would really appreciate to have somebody in the audience, okay? So just drop me a yes in the kind of message if at all you are a student. Okay, so, okay, 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 so people are joining, a couple of them have joined. Okay, great. So let's start. Let's start. Okay. So as I was trying to tell you, we have not yet started. We have just about to start these particular things, guys. Okay. So the session which we are kind of doing today is what you refer to as evaluation of a patient with a testicular mass. Okay. So let's kind of start without any further ado. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you guys answer for me, guys. If at all you see that there is a patient who is coming to you with a painless testicular swelling, what do you suspect? Okay, so obviously you will kind of inspect it, you will palpate it, and depending on the consistency, there are a few differentials which you're going to make. Okay, so one of the very, very important differentials which you're going to make is, obviously, that it will be some kind of a testicular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can unmute and you can interact with me if you want, not an issue. Okay, uh, so the drug sheet. What do you think? Like, what will you have? If at all, let's say there is a patient who is having a painless testicular swelling, uh, yeah, what will you suspect? Sir, it uh, can be a testicular malignancy. Right. What else it can be? It can be a cyst or a hydrocele. Yeah, very good. So more common one is the hydrocele, right? So if at all somebody doesn't give you the consistency and everything, yes, the two important differentials which you basically consider is what you call as a testicular malignancy, any kind it can be, we cannot, okay, so never say that it will be seminoma or XYZ because that what is a histopathological diagnosis, right? So you can see that you know, you must suspect some kind of a testicular malignancy and the hydrocele. These are the two things which you usually kind of, the, the primary differentials, that's what we're going to do, right? That's fine. Okay, right. So if at all you suspect, okay, so testicular malignancy and hydrocele, okay, these are the two things which you can suspect, obviously, very, very basic things, okay. Now, let's talk a bit about the testicular malignancy. So, obviously, here, I will also try to kind of give you the knowledge as well, like whatever the theoretical knowledge as well. Um, pretty sure you guys know many of these things, but I'll just try to kind of share these things with you. Okay, so epidemiology, that is basically around 1% of all the male neoplasm, that's all fine, nobody bothers about these things. Okay, 1% to 2% of these are bilateral. So this is something which you need to understand, right? So uh, can you tell me one bilateral testicular malignancy which you have heard of ever? Anybody? 
Okay, so testicular lymphomas, which are like more than six years of age, they tend to be bilateral and not synchronous metachronous. It means that they are not occurring, let's say, within six months or so. But if at all somebody is having a cryptogenism, then even the contralateral testes is at the risk of malignancy. So in these particular scenarios, you might end up having a bilateral malignancy. Okay, so we'll talk about that. Okay, so only one to two percent are bilateral. Most of them are kind of urinatural. The most common histological septum, obviously, it is a germ cell tumor. It constitutes around 90 to 95 percent. And in this also, there are we have divided germ cell malignancies and non-germ cell malignancies. Germ cell malignancies are divided into seminomatous and the non-seminomatous. So out of all the germ cell malignancies, seminoma constitutes around 40, 40, 52 to 56 percent. Non-seminomatous are around 44 to 48 percent. So broadly, what we need to understand predominantly are the germ cells, 90 to 95. Out of that, more common is the seminoma, around 50, 52 uh, percent, like 45, 48 percent is your non-seminomatous. So this is the broad things which you have to kind of understand. 10 to 30 percent of the men might come to you with a distant metastasis. That's all fine. Okay. Just remember around 20, 25 percent might come to you with a distant metastasis. That's fine. Now, painless solid testicular uh, swelling. Okay. So if testicular tumor, unless proven otherwise, that's fine. Solid. Here I'm talking about the solid, right? So hydrocele will have the fluctuation and all those things. We are not going to discuss that in detail, but if at all, there is a painless solid testicular swelling in the main, you have to consider that you know what it is a uh, uh, what do you call as testicular tumor. It can be other things as well. It can be, let's say, a hematocele or a very, very tense hydrocele. These things can be there, but you have to kind of give it a benefit of doubt and you have to consider that you know, probably you're dealing with a testicular malignancy itself. May have a secondary hydrocele like the... That's fine. Okay. Now, okay. Uh, all of you are... Uh, I hope that you guys are aware of a concept of a primary hydrocele and the secondary hydrocele. So let's assume... What is the secondary hydrocele? I'll tell you. So uh, you might be knowing, but I'll just tell you so that the flow is not broken. If at all you have any testicular pathology, right? Now, reactive to that, some fluid can be secreted. That is what is referred to as a secondary hydrocele. So what can be a testicular pathology? Epidemic orchitis, testicular malignancies. And these particular hydrocele they tend to be kind of uh, lax. Okay. Translumination may be present, but they tend to be lax. So I'm pretty sure that if at all you're working in some government hospital and uh, you're a resident over there, maybe a couple of times you would have encountered a patient who was operated in the periphery, considering that the patient was a hydrocele, but when they opened it up, probably it had a malignancy or so. Are you understanding my point? So these kind of screw ups do happen, but obviously they are absolutely lethal. They should not be done. And obviously they will not happen at the very, very good center. They might happen in very, very periphery where maybe the certified people are not doing a hydrocele or they're not evaluating the patients in a good manner. I'm pretty sure you might have come across at least a couple of patients like this. Okay. Now, whenever you get a patient of a testicular mass or a malignancy or something, do not forget to examine the abdomen of the patient. Why Why you Why you should examine the abdomen of the patient? So, Rakshi or Ashwini, can you uh, unmute and anybody of you can unmute and tell me why you should examine the, what do you call as abdomen of these patients? Yeah, Rudrakshi. Mm -hmm. Palpation of inguinal lymph nodes, maybe. Inguinal lymph nodes? Okay. Yeah, Ashwini, you tell. So look for mets, so liver mets. Liver mets. Will you be able to palpate the liver mets? No, sir. But liver will be in that case. Okay. So you say that you will do the abdominal examination to palpate the liver. Okay. Now, I'll ask you a direct question to you. So what is the sentinel lymph node? Or uh, like from the testes, if at all the malignancy is spreading, what is the first lymph node where the malignancy is spreading? So retroperitoneal lymph node, sir. Uh... So if at all the patient is very, very lean and thin, then these retroperitoneal lymph nodes might present to you as a abdominal lump. Okay. That is the reason why you examine the abdomen of these particular patients. Did you get it? Got it? Thanks. Yes, sir. Even if there is a hematogenous metastasis, they will first go to the lungs. Cannonball metastasis. That is what they're going to have. And the lymph nodes, actually it is not an inguinal, it is an abdomen, like retroperitoneal lymph nodes. And if at all we are dealing with a very, very lean and thin patient, then you might be able to palpate it on the abdominal examination. Right? Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, yeah. So just one thing, I will just say one thing. It's very, very good that you guys are interacting and please, 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 please continue to do so. Even if you tell us something wrong, it's absolutely okay. We all are students. I'm still a student. I'm still learning. There's many things which even I don't know to die, but it is good that you speak up. Okay. Because if at all, just if at all, you commit a mistake and if just because I was born a bit earlier than you, I have learned these things a bit earlier than you, doesn't make me any wiser than you. Okay, I'm probably of the same IQ as you, right? Now, but 
if at all we all are friends we are all are the students of science and if at all we kind of discuss it up and if at all i share something with you